Okay, so I know that I asked you a little bit of a question about you last week. You said you just started trading, right? Um, do you want to do this more a bit more of a full time Rob or more of a part time component? Um, this was going to be part time at first. And okay. Then as I got, you know, as you go along, advanced in it, I would definitely consider it. Okay. Cool. Sounds good. It's very interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And I think he's going to come in. How are you doing? Good. David? Yes. Nice to meet you, David. Yes. I think I've seen you before. Did uh, you come to one of the workshops before? A long time ago, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So, David, that's Rob, Rob, how are you David. Doing all right? How are you doing? Good. Okay. So, we just basically started, David. Uh, hmm. All right, so today's topic is maybe how to make an extra income trade in the markets uh, consistently for the rest of, the of your life. Because at the end of the day, once you have the piece of information and the knowledge, it's like a profession, being an engineer, doctor, and so forth. It's pretty much an ongoing thing. It's a life experience. In my opinion, it also leads to uh, enlightenment in terms of the spirituality aspect. Okay, so. Um, Did you just see that? Yes, correct. Uh, Patrick. Patrick has the wrong link. I'm sorry, guys. Just bear with me. One guy is trying to go in. His name is Patrick. If you have any questions along the way, just feel free to ask. I'm sure you probably amazing for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, from the disclaimer, simply, uh, I'm here just to give you solid information as much as I can. I'm not here to tell you anything. It's uh, once once in a while I give out free pieces of information. I don't give informal advice. So. Uh, and just simply that if you want advice, then seek a financial advisor. That's basically what it's just basically to say. Okay, so a little bit about me. I started trading, uh, this is my 20th year in trading. I started in 1996. I used to be a database administrator, and my background is physics and mathematics, computer science and math. Um, I started actually as a database administrator, worked for a big UK company in the University of Australia, and then after that, 2002, I went full time. So how I started actually started from real estate investing, and then friends basically introduced me into trading. Um, I'm a type of person that if I want to learn something, I want to do it properly. So I, I attended workshops, attended seminars, paid my dues on average during that time is between five to ten grand basically for the weekend. Uh, the opportunity came uh, when I was still competing. In actual fact. Uh, I used to compete for 17 years in Taekwondo. I used to represent Australia in Taekwondo. Uh, I still do train Taekwondo. It's my 35th year. Um, but now I just basically teach at Stanford University and I teach at the YMCA as part of the community work that I do. And likewise, Stanford asked me to be able to help them. Um, so when I moved to the US, I was training there 
and that's how it all started. Now I still compete. You know, I do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, I just competed last weekend, so it was fun for me. This is the, com the, com uh, the competitive edge to test my skills under pressure. And the reason I do that is because, same in trading, I believe there's no difference. As a trader, you need to have the competitive edge if you want to make money in the marketplace. I was explaining earlier today to the students that even as an employee, even before they become an employee, they have to have a competitive edge against others. So especially if you want to fill up in a competition or, or fill up a position, they need to sell themselves, right? So that's how it works. Um, currently, I'm also a high-level coach. Uh, I was honored, you know, it was pretty, pretty much an honor for me to be one of the coaches as well and coach the national team, the World University Games a few years ago. Um, and then to be in that environment, once again, it's a really good feeling because once you represent your own country and then you're competing against other countries and you go to the athlete village and stuff and then you're against awesome other athletes from all over the world, basically. So for me, trading is very the same. You are competing against other traders out there, international, globally. So 80% and actually 90% of my trades are currency trades, and currencies are simply the you know the most liquid um, trading vehicle out there. It has more than 5.4 trillion dollars every day, while Nasdaq is only around two to five billion dollars, basically which is actually $25 billion in one day, which is not enough, right? Um, and so I work with elite athletes. I work with elite traders as well. Um, once a year, I take students to the trading floor, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Now that sh the CME is actually, you know, closed, it's unfortunate. And I can't bring students there anymore. But I bring them to the CBOE. And so we look at the S&P pit and the VIX pit. So there are still two pits that are very active for traders, but the talk is simply that they are about to close it as well. And when that happens, it's gonna be sad because if once there's no more open outcry. To get into the New York Stock Exchange, unfortunately, it's very, very strict. So I was there last August and you know, I was meant to go to the trading floor. Uh, unfortunately, if nobody is there, the person who wants to get you in, despite their friends or friends of a friend, you can't go. They're very, very strict. Um, so, you know, there's no guarantees that I could bring students to the New York Stock Exchange, but at least for the Chicago trip, uh, there's guarantees I can basically take them. And in most cases, they get a red carpet because they explain everything in detail from top to bottom. Because at the end of the day, it's all about price actions, about price movement. A chart is a chart. Um, unfortunately, with a chart, you can give your own perception, especially if you start or you learn how to trade via price patterns, indicators, these type of systems. And these were the type of systems that I learned and I thought I knew about trading. So at the end of the day, when I moved here, I started networking. I worked for one trading company. I, I wanted to know as well the background in terms of the education and what's happening. And they're all the same, the same model, business model. You know, for a fact, they don't really care. At the end of the day, they don't care about who they sell to. For them, it's just a numbers game. And there's no such thing as a perfect methodology. Uh, and they know that once they give them some form of piece of information, they get excited. And then what happens, and then the day they put the piece of information, get it in the cupboard, and so forth. And then they sell them, they upsell them, they keep upselling them until they've spent on average been 50 to 100K. Probably my education, I paid more than 150,000 my own education, basically. So, so it all depends on the way, how you want it, where you want it to go. Um, so um, this is why 2012, I published a book called Where You Could Be Destined to Fail and Train, How You Can Avoid It. Um, it is a book slash workbook, and it's more the mental game of it. Things that you need to avoid, things that you need to know. And for our students, maybe for my students, I use that book as a workbook, as a point of reference for them. Um, and hence, the whole model of the way how I teach is what I call the video have trading principle. You know, there is a certain process similar to sports, the same process in sports. Uh, there's a, an emotional flow chart that students have to follow as a form of awareness 
you need to be, you know, to be aware every time you're trading. Because each and every time that you're trading, you're actually in a hypnotic state. And when you're in a hypnotic state, you don't even realize on why you did certain things, right? That's why a plan is very important. We're going to go through that. Um, so what are the benefits based on trading? Well, trading is a business that gives you unlimited income, which is awesome. And there is a big difference between... Have you guys read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by any chance? So um, I recommend it. That's actually what led me to be where I'm at today is because of that book. It started from that book and stated there's four quadrants if you want to be financially free. I was financially free by 2003. Um, and then a big thing happened to me. I lost close to a million dollars back in 2003. So there's a single took more risks and I wanted to actually short gold. But my mental origin at the time said, no, you don't know what you're doing, or you're going short. And I put everything. And so rather than shorting, I went long. March 17, I believe, or March 13, one of them two. Americans landed in Iraq, bam, the markets basically went the other way. The dollar basically went to, to the roof and gold overnight basically just tanked. And I already knew there and then because I shorted uh, it's called the Hero Gold, it's an Australian stock, got bought out actually. And it was a, despite you know, top 100 uh, stocks, it was a penny stock. Actually, it was a dollar. It was a dollar during that time. Yeah, I bought 700,000 shares, something like that. Um, so, overnight, in less than 10 minutes, I basically got liquidated. I already knew, and it wasn't a good feeling. On the other hand, if I stuck to my own stuff and I didn't listen to my mentor during the time, probably, perhaps, I won't be here teaching you. Because, uh, you know, as a 25, 27 year old, I mean, to make that amount of money, and in my opinion, it had to happen. You know, I think it comes to a purpose and I do it much. So that's why my purpose as a mentor, as a teacher, is to give a piece of information of the things that you shouldn't do uh, because of the mistakes of what we've done. And also to learn, and I was fortunate enough to actually meet good mentors who actually taught me on how to trade properly. Because at the end of the day, it's all about price. It's all price action. So these guys who trade on the trading floor, when I actually published the book, I got invited to talk with some of the hedge fund managers in New York. And actually, like we're in Chicago, and then through there, I met some of the floor traders, and they said, you know, all the good old things. And it's good to know that everything that I do teach is in the same effect on the way how they trade, on the way how I have been learned how to trade. It means about supply and demand. And the psychology aspect is very important. Right? So, that being said, there is a, there's an employee mindset and for year slash business mindset so you know being an employee you are limited in terms of your income being an employer there's no limitation so it's, it's unlimited you work and you get paid based on the hours you put in. Here is why performance. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur, you own the company. You need to put time and effort into your own business. So why the problem of retailers or retail traders or someone who's new and wants to learn how to trade unfortunately they have the mindset of being an employee and then they want to get into here they will struggle a little bit because they see that in order to make x amount of money so say for example in order for you to make ten thousand dollars per month is by working 60 hours a week. 
for yeah, six hours a week or six hours a month, one of them. I don't know. Here, to make ten thousand dollars a month for one hour a day. Sometimes you can make that in a day. Is impossible. Why? Because the brain can't translate that. You hear me? The amount of income that you can receive in being your own business is unlimited. It all depends on the way how you see it. Everything's all relative. Okay, that's one of the advantages. Two, trading has low overheads. What do you need? Laptop, internet? That's it. Your trading mindset, your knowledge, your skill set. At one point, or the very beginning, um, maybe here, every three months I have to leave the country. You know, and then during the time, next, my, you know, spent about three months in Europe. Excellent. I was just traveling with him, basically. You have the time, you have the money, you have the freedom. That's what the ability of what trading can do is also the freedom to do what you want to do. So when I started, I only traded on an hour a day. Um, and then the rest was doing nothing. All my friends were working. And when I got here the first time in the US, I got addicted to TV. Because in Australia, I mean, during the time early 2000s, cable was just being new. And you only have like, like less than 10 channels, basically. And you come here, you have like more than 200 channels. And it's like, bang. So at one point, basically, I said, we need to turn it off. Because you're going to dig to it. And so North Carolina didn't do nothing. So I did. I hiked every day, basically. So, but it was fun. But you also have all the freedom in the world. Um, you can work anywhere in the world with it. You can choose your own hours, technically, depending on what time, which one you use. So I use Forex because Forex is actually a vehicle that it's more uh, flexible. That's the word I was looking for. In other words, if you are a night owl and then you're going to force yourself to wake up at 5 in the morning, forget. Especially if you live in the same the West Coast, what time does the market open? 6.30 in the morning. If you live in the East Coast, no problem because they open at 9.30, right? But to maintain consistency to wake up at 5 in the morning will take a while until we create a certain habit. Now, if you're trading Forex, you want to, you can trade the Asian market or you can trade the European market. That is the advantage of it. Right? So yeah, that's why it's very flexible. It's also very flexible for teaching is because, say, for example, for people who work, they normally work from nine to five, sometimes to six, so they can trade the Asian session from six o'clock till around midnight. Or they can trade the European session between 11 and two in the morning if they want to. Or if they're a morning owl, then they can trade early in the morning between five and seven o'clock before they go to work. Now, as a form of vehicle for teaching, I can choose which one's which. That's why we have three different uh, actually, at this point in time, there's morning class and evening class. Last year, we have an afternoon class. It was seldom with people coming in the afternoon, so that's why we just made it as the most popular times for the morning and evening class, um, which also work for people who live overseas, right? That's so why you can choose whatever time zones that you want to trade, trading for. Um, you can work five minutes a day, an hour a day, six hours a day, or 24 hours a day. And hence, it's really up to you on how much you, you want to work. Uh, my style is simply less than one hour a day, but because I also teach, I already know which one switch anyway, in, in order for me to choose and pick which trades I want to trade in terms of high probability trades. You have no one to report to, which is awesome. Um, there is an upside and downside to it. The upside is that um, you're free, basically. The downside is that it's a lonely profession. So uh, luckily enough for us on the other hand, so it's a team environment, it's a camaraderie. And, and 
when you're in that environment, in terms of the payment environment, and at least you have more lines, people looking in terms of correct your work, basically. Um, you can create your wealth and manage your own portfolio. After 2008, when the market basically crashed, a lot of people lost their money on average here in Silicon Valley, is around 1.5 to $2 million where they lost basically their um, retirement funds overnight, basically. After that, a lot more people wanted to learn how to trade because uh, they don't trust you know, other companies like fund managers anymore. And hence, most people want to, to manage their own portfolio, their own 401k. And hence, that's the key. The goal for a trader technically is to learn how to trade all trading vehicles so you can also hedge your own positions and so forth, either for short term, medium term, or longer term. Uh, you can have multiple different accounts from for trading 401k all the way to a normal day-to-day -day living expenses. Okay. So the idea is simply, and this is what I did in the past, while I was working, I was trading part-time, and then I, sh you know, I showed myself the consistency, proved to myself that I was making money, uh, and I actually got challenged uh, by a friend. So after coming back from Thailand, the guy, actually one of my friends, it was a coincidence, I don't believe in coincidence either. It had to happen. We, he was in the same plane as me. And then we started talking and he, he gave me a challenge. Uh, he was a financial advisor and I said, hey, you have no kids, you're young. Why are you still working? Because um, at times I made more than what I could earn as a database administrator. In the 90s, I mean, I was earning $3,000 a month. I mean, as a... A person with no debt is like, oh, this is a lot of money. And then when I started trading, you know, my biggest one was 25K in one day. And it's like, dang, there's more than I, what I can make. And so it was a security. For me, it was a security that while I was still at stage in uh, at work. Then when I left, six months later, actually three months later, this is when I had the big event I lost. And I was forced to sell um, some of my properties, basically. So either I go back to work or go back to work or sell my properties in order to continue my journey with trading. And I chose to sell the properties. When I really think about it, I shouldn't have <laughs> because I killed the golden goose because that was also giving me the, the passive income. And that's how I became. Uh, by Robert Kiyosaki, I followed what he stated. And it replaced my income through my parental properties, and that's how I became financially free. I had no debts. I was earning more than $3,000 a month through the rental, and, and that's net, by the way. That in the, the mortgage was already being paid. So through that, I said to myself, well, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. And hence, that's when I sold the majority of the properties. When they got sold, um, this is where I got more into my education, not on the technical side, not on the training side, but more on the self-development side. Learning more about myself, and about hypnosis, new music programming. So I wanted to know more about me. So, and that's the connectivity, is that that's why trading for me is 100% mindset. And the one why it's a total reflection as well, in my sport, at one point, I get to the finals, I already know that I'm not gonna be in the front, I'm not gonna be. So there was a pattern. It's very interesting. Um, one of the advantages of trading is that you will know more about the whole global economy, which is a phenomenal thing because once you know the whole global, the macro fundamentals, that will create more of the probability on the way how you plan your trades, basically. So it's not just a system. System, in my opinion, to create a probability. System, the system itself is a small portion. Uh, the biggest piece of the pie is the macro fundamentals. Knowing the connectivity of how everything basically works. Now mathematically, in terms of probability, if you're going to in trade your markets, you are already successful by like 32% even before you execute the trade. Why? Because when it comes to price, price will only go in three different directions, up, sideways, and down. So that's a theory. 
Therefore, you need to find the 66% deficit to have 100% probability of winning. Now, here's the thing. When you choose as part of your analysis, once you execute, it becomes a 50-50 game. But the probability will increase your 50-50. Does that make sense? So, becomes when I say 50-50, either you will get to your target point, or to your stop loss point. That's why it's 50-50. But what is the probability we go your target first compared to your probability we go your stop loss first? If you can create that, then awesome. Then you have a good trading method. Everything for us is about probabilities. Everything for us is very highly, it's highly objective, and there's no subjectivity into it. Lastly, the benefit of trading is that you will know more about yourself. Trading is an art. It's like martial arts, it's an art. You will know more about yourself than anything. Uh, that's why for us, trading psychology is a very important element. So we look at a trade, we look at the live case scenario behind it. Why? Why did you lose? What's stopping you? What is the resistance? Why, if there is a potential trade, all you gotta do is just basically execute. If everything is already being laid out for you, all you gotta do is, say, is to press the trigger. The question is why? Why did you press the trigger? Then there's an underlying source of fear in there, an underlying source of lack of trust, lack of confidence. And we need to go through all those. So is trading easy? Yes, it is easy provided that you learn it correctly. Provided you have a trading coach. Golden State Warriors have six assistant coaches. If you go to their website and turn with their staff, they have six assistant coaches. Athletes who compete in a high level, they will have these two or three coaches. Um, in trading, I mean, people also have their own businesses. They also have a business coach. If you want this as a, a vehicle for your freedom, then it is imperative to have a coach, whether you like it or not. Um, you need to have a good solid mental conditioning. You need to put time into your learning. You, have an, you need to have an open mind for learning, provided you also invest in your education first before thinking of making money. And then that is the number one mistake of what newbies basically do is they want to make money automatically. It's almost like you want to win in a basketball match, a soccer match, or in a boxing match without you training. So it wouldn't work. It doesn't work that way. Um, you do, provided you do not think about making money and last year you are in a team environment. So the truth about Trading is that 75 to 98% of traders, especially the retail traders, are unprofitable and almost certain that most traders will lose all of their capital in the first three years of trading. It's not a myth, it's a fact. If you go to the trading floor, if there's 10 floor traders, the seven will disappear basically in the first year. On the second year, one will disappear. On the third year, only one or two will remain. So it is a very low statistic in terms of, of success. So here, I took it basically, uh, there's a PDF file via FXCM, because I use FXCM. If you, uh, the US is currently regulated, the currency markets is currently regulated. Outside of the US is still non-regulated, as we can have all the way to 520 in terms of leverage. In the US, they cut it down after 2008, they dropped it to 52 before you can choose 100 to 1, 200 to 1, even 500 to 1. So from 2012 to 2014, this was an old one actually that I got ages ago when I um, was doing the presentation. Notice that in terms of profitability, 28 for the first quarter, same part as 29%, but the lowest was 26% in the third quarter and the highest was 31% in the fourth quarter. 
total uh, number of counts reported, just this one's under 19 and a half thousand, 9.2, 20,000, 20,000. So you combine all together two, four, six, eight, just under 100,000 members for FXM 2012. Four years later, in 2016, Notice in terms of profitability, that hasn't really changed. It's still the same. The lowest is 28 percent. The highest was 33 percent. Uh, third quarter of 2016. So it's in terms of profitability is between 67 and 72 percent. It's pretty good. Stocks, on the other hand, and actually in the total accounts, increased massively just over 115, 120,000 after four years. So I'm more stock traders, more futures traders are moving the currency markets because of his advantage of what he can do. And this is also why I needed a vehicle to teach the principle of trading and hence I choose the currency markets because one, it is leveraged. Uh, hence, after the beginners, when I get to the intermediate, I tell members you know, it's good enough to open a $500 account because you need to show the consistency. And then from there, you can increase your capital once you're showing consistency and you have the confidence. Consistency, you can also have the belief and you can trust the methodologies because they do work and they have to prove it to themselves. So our research shows on the other hand that 95% of traders have issues with their mindset due to emotions, especially when a person is highly neurotic. And hence, this is why as part of the beginner program is that I need to profile them. It has got nothing to do with whether they're crazy, just giving them the idea in terms of what we call three-dimensional profile through your conscientiousness, where you have a person who is persistent and has a lot of responsibility, can take full accountability neuroticism based on your emotions, whether you're the type of person who can handle your own emotions or you can be the type of person who goes ballistic when some things go wrong. Uh, and then last is about your risk, whether you're more risk taker or you're risk averse or you're in between with your risk tolerant. Uh, floor traders in the CME, uh, this is what a few years back, stated 98% of future traders basically lose money. So on average around 95, and then for brokers, uh, I know a few brokers on the trading floor who work for big institutions, and they told me that uh, one guy, actually Mark, who see more than 10,000 uh, clients, that the success rate is 95% for both equities and options. So in other words, our profitability is only 5%. That's a very low number. Okay? And the question now is, why? Well, according to Terry Odin, Terry Odin uh, was an MBA that did a lot of research in the mid 90s, the late 90s. Another guy called Brad Barber, who's the same, I think, UC Davis or UC Berkeley. Uh, Terry Odin's from UC Berkeley. And stated that number one, traders were buying stocks that had recent or fallen substantially in the next months prior to buying. In other words, they're getting too late. And it's very common. Uh, because when a person is seeking confirmation, it's too late. Two, there are lots of stocks that fall and a lot of traders jump into stocks that have sharp news or a lot of media attention. Uh, <laughs> Link. The beginning of the week of Monday, um, Market Watch, which is part of B Charts, 
this guy from Montreal and they were being following him and they have a, or this guy apparently has a fun called YOLO and he was stating that he's going to short everything of what he's got shorting Apple and then look into it if there's no confirmation that the Apple is actually going to fail. So if we look at the, the chart of Apple prior to earnings, there is no indication that Apple is going to drop. This was for the month of Jan. Then on Jan, if we, if we go through a daily time frame, even the weekly, there's nothing dictated that's going to fail. You look at a daily time frame, nothing dictating that this is going to fail at all. Why? Because it's in an uptrend. You don't have a lower high, everything's just a higher high. That's why I tell, you know, I told one of the guys, like, this guy's an idiot. He's just gambling his money now. Is it really that he's gambling? Not there. He might have an agenda, and this is why I would recommend to never ever just listen to news and follow what people basically do. It's a bad mistake. Never subscribe either. Not unless you really know the methodology that you're basically sub sub subscribing to. In most cases, news. When it comes to news, they have an agenda. They will create articles. Let's say for this guy, for example, he wants to short it. Who knows? Maybe he's hedging his his trade. So basically, he's, he's creating a lot of fear, and people will sell in order to buy. And you don't know what, who he works for. It could be anyone. And hence, the next day, he went up some more than six percent. An actual gap went to 128. So he, in actual fact. Uh, predicted it's going to 128. So he knows what he's doing. He probably knows it, but he's just probably playing dumb. Okay, so the next day, there was a part of his article, he actually lost all 250000 dollars $260,000, basically. But he's saying in the forum that if it drops, it goes to, say, 110 or something like that, it will make an average of three to $5 million. But that didn't happen, right? So, just to prove once again that traders have been trying to sell the wrong stocks. Why? Because maybe perhaps it's the one they don't know really what they're doing or just following someone based on rules. So, never do that. Um, moving forward from there. Is it a fact or fiction that a lot of people make money through day trading? You can make money consistently day trading if you definitely know what you're doing and you're already experienced. At the very beginning, the chances have actually been very slim, especially if you're using systems that uh, that's, has a lot of indicators in there. These indicators are actually, you know, they are lagging indicators. Unless you know price movement and you're buying a demand, you're selling at supply, and you're getting to the closest price point to where institutions are actually buying. So in other words, wholesale price. When we are trading, the best analogy that I basically can give, uh, <laughs> I really can't really make, just imagine just a whale. <laughs> nice whale. <laughs> and then, here you have a bunch of sardines. Best analogy I can give, these are your retail traders, these are your institutions. This could be Goldman Sachs, this could be Morgan Stanley, could be anybody. It could be Bank of America, it could be Citigroup, and so forth. We see ourselves as this little fish that's next to the big well. That when the big well basically goes up, we go up with the big world. It goes down, we go down with the big world, the big world just stays there. And the reason being, all it has to do is to open its mouth and the current is on this side. 
But these guys don't even realize they're being eaten alive. And you don't want to be in this part of the game. You will lose. So in other words, if you're over here, you're being an observer. You're just observing, observing where the whale is actually going. But here is a photo taken by two different forks for years, where they took a data over 400 traders and they needed to find in terms of profitability by time time. Once it reaches four hours, this is where the threshold of where traders will start to make money. Anything below four hours, the probability that the person will make money trading the market, especially in the currency market, is very slim. This piece of data actually applies to trading stocks, futures, and options. Actually, options are different volume because you're, you're using here mainly the time and the volatility and so forth. Okay. Four hours, Four hours a profitability score of five means traders are on average breaking even. Below five means losing on average and above means profiting on average. When you hit four hours, you're above the mean of five. Anything below five, so one hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, one minute time frame, the odds of the trader to make money or to be profitable is very slow. Four hours the length of time they're in the trade or four hours uh, the amount of time you As far as the time frame when people analyze a chart. Oh, analyze Yes. <clears throat> people who use one minute time frame, one hour time frame, yeah, the, the probability that they're going to make money is very slow. Sorry to blow them. So anything that you're using a time in four hours, daily, weekly, the higher the time and that's why we have a philosophy, less is more. The less you trade, the more money you're gonna make. And the less you trade, where you more and more money you're gonna make, then you also have more time for yourself. So with everything that I basically showed you, if these are all true, which are they're all facts, then how can you really make money trading the markets then? Well, the best analogy I can give is basically sports. Sports is an anal analogy, and it doesn't matter what type of sport, from playing soccer to sports, um, to gymnastics, to wrestling, to weightlifting, to badminton, to cycling. Every athlete needs to prepare themselves prior to a major event. They also start before even they got in to the Olympics, everyone starts from the source. And what is the source? Well, they start at a very young age, or they start at a certain time in their life, and then they trained a lot, competed, got into a club level, started winning, coach sees that they have the ability, takes them to a state level. From a state level, they prove themselves, they start winning, they get chosen, they go to a national level, then they start winning, then they represent their own country, and go to a world-class level, either world championships or the Olympics. That's how it works. In due course, imagine the amount of hours that they put in in terms of training. Uh, Cambridge University published a book called The Handbook of Expertise and Expert Performance. Now, it's a very thick book. To be honest, I didn't read the whole one. Um, but th they have found the 10,000 hours is the magic number to master a skill. It doesn't matter whether if it's from playing the violin, the piano, to a sport, even chess. However, to master one thing is, is through purposeful practice. Not just practicing for the sake of practicing, but purposeful practice. Like Bruce Lee basically says, I'm afraid of someone who's done 10,000 kicks, proper 10,000 kicks. Not just a person who just did 10,000 kicks for the sake of doing 10,000 kicks. Okay. In trading, uh, it's my 20th year. I've caught probably more than 22,000 hours in terms of looking at charts and looking at uh, the basic trading itself. Um, Yes, I did spend a lot of money, but at the same time, I am glad actually that I did spend that money in terms of my own education. 
because this is what I wanted to do. Now, if you love something that much, you will do anything for it. Likewise, for sport. I was actually telling uh, my kids that, you know, I love Taekwondo. And, you know, I was telling my, my girlfriend that I didn't really have a life. You know, we at school, went to school, trained, worked, that's it. You know, we go to parties once in a while, but I didn't go crazy. Why? Because I was focusing training. And it was fun. You get you go overseas for it, which is awesome. And after training or after the competition, this is when we play. And then you go back again to the drawing board, start all over again. And it's just life. And it was part of my life. And I never regret it, to be honest. Trading is also the same for me. I wish the mines never closed, so, to be honest, even weekends. And that's how. Because when, when you are in love with something, you will have the passion and desire to keep calm. That's what fuels you. So let's take professional sports. Before each and every fight with these guys, imagine the amount of training, preparation, physically and mentally they have to do if they want to win. Um, Ryan Pacquiao, basically, you will have an eight-week program in terms of training. He trains every day, uh, three times to four times a day. Um, so if you're going to step into the ring with them, what are the odds you think that you're going to and against them? If we all step in and we are not skilled enough, the chances that we are going to win against is very small. Same analogy. What are the odds you're going to win against these guys? We have all the resources in the world, all the pieces of information that's ahead out of everybody. The odds are also very slim. So if we are looking already here that we have a probability from a starting point of 33%, but if you have a lack of skill set in the 66%, and it's only giving you a 55% in the total, having 55% success rate in your opinion is the gamble. It's not enough. Wall Street Journal released a report that the average success rate of a retail trader is 55%. Um, daily FX. Someone wrote an article about why is it that the traders lose money. They took out of 40 million trading accounts worldwide, euro, dollar, for example, despite a success rate of 61%, then how come the trader still loses money? And guess what the answer was? It's because they will take their profits too quickly that they will let their losers run. Why? Because based on their audience, here. Momentum trader jumping on the biggest in I'm sorry. Here, sorry. Audience said that traders strongly prefer to sell their winning investments and hold on to their losing investments. Even though the winning investments they sell as a new art perform the losers they continue to hold, traders do not like to admit that they have made a mistake and sell a losing thing. Nobody wants to lose at the end of the day. But in trading, if you want to make money in the marketplace consistently, is you need to accept defeat. That losing is part of the game. It's just a game. If you can accept that losing is part of the game, easy. Then you would be able to control the, the emotion. In other words, there's no action, no emotions, because you already accepted that losing is part of the game. And if, you, if that would be the thought process, then you would put in your stop loss. Good traders, professional traders, we will calculate our stop loss first before the amount of money we need to gain. Based as well on the probability. I have a rule that I only put in trades 80% uh, and above. Anything, the probability 80% below, I don't put in the trade. If I want to test trade it, let's say it's a 70% success rate, mm, I won't go full out. It's like playing cards. I will just place a small bit, test it. If it's on my direction, and increase the probability from 7% all the way to 89%, then we'll add more in terms of the position. Uh, other than that, no go. Okay. 
One factor with peanut control in trading is poor is that there is no certainty that you're going to win, except, I mean, except that losing is part of the game. At the same time, if you're playing poker, there's 52 cards in the deck, right? If you're a good counter, you can count cards, then you can have more odds in terms of winning. Unfortunately, trading the markets, there is unlimited amount of cards in, a, in an open deck. That's the thing. Despite giving you 100% probability, you can calculate the probability and say 100%, but still no guarantees that you're going to make money. Great example. We traded the dollar cat. Has a high probability based on what the system raises said. But two days in a row, it didn't want to play out. So either you get out or you hold and still stick to the plan. You didn't want to play out and it basically got stopped out. So things like that. It has a good probability. The dollar Japanese yen had a higher probability actually. They are both good probabilities. This one worked out well because it dropped more or close to 200 pips in the span of basically one week. Okay. The training game. Why do traders lose money? Very simple. One, lack of planning preparation. Two, lack of trading knowledge, lack of trading skill. Four, lack of trading experience. Five, lack of trading emotional control. And number six, which is very important, is the lack of self-awareness. Here is basically a learning pyramid. The pyramid has been studied by a top university in the East Coast, I believe it's Northwestern University or New York University, one of them, NYU. So psychologists basically have found, or based on behavioral science, stated that in terms of the retention rate, like right now, right? You guys, I am currently in lecture, giving a lecture. You're reading what you can see here this year, how your own visual. In total, your retention rate is only basically 20%. So if you're taking notes, even better, then your duration retention rate will increase a little bit. But if you're demonstrating yourself, then your retention rate is 30%. Once we start discussing it as a group, your retention rate will be 50. You practice by doing 75. You start teaching, you need to use 90%. Hence, the advantage why I use Forex as a vehicle for learning is because students, despite me teaching the theory, it is also important for them to explain it themselves in front of everybody. Because well, if they can discuss, and we can discuss that, then the retention rate will increase significantly. Hence, that's why the success rate of my students making money in the marketplace is so high is because of this element. But I think at the time to get to the advanced part of the curriculum is that in their syllabus, it is imperative for them, they need to teach one class a week. When they get to the intermediate, they also help others, especially the beginners or their co-members by helping them either their the homework or whatever, what's missing in terms of the technical analysis. Uh, practice by doing is where you have live trading on a daily basis and as part of the intermediate actually, the rule and the rule the syllabus hasn't been created by myself. It was created via by the students because for me as a teacher is I wanted to have the idea coming from a student who, you, who used to be an intermediate or a beginner or even an advanced. So basically I asked them, if now that you're advanced, what do you think needs to be done in order for them to pass from intermediate to the advanced? Because they saw the importance of practice as part of the syllabus that they need to finish 100 trading checklists. In other words, they, they have done 100 trades, live trades, utilizing uh, the trading checklist from top to bottom with no fail. And that's part of the curriculum. And then they can be tested. There's always an exam. And then if they pass, if everybody sees fit, me and the advanced students, then I am going to pass the intermediate student. So it is via democracy. So if I see fit, hey, Robert, what do you think of David's work? Is he ready for to go to the advanced? If everybody in the group agrees, bam, then we will test 
David, and then this is where I'm going to pass it. To get to a, to get their black belts, on the other hand, is for me, it's not about the end result. It's about the result of the process of consistency. How consistent are they? Once they've shown the consistency, then they, once they start real, trading real money, it becomes so easy. Okay, that's the whole process. Let's do an exercise. You have a pen. Uh, you have a pen. Here, do you have a pen? Do you have a pen? I don't know. Okay, here's a pen. Do uh, you have a scrap paper? Can you do it on a computer? Or? No, unfortunately, it wouldn't work. Thanks. I want you to pick up the pen with your dominant hand. I want you to write your signature. Great, change hands. Write your signature. Is it the same? Notice that on the second one, you had to think about it. The first one, you didn't even think. You just did it, correct? So this is the process of the stages of learning. What you did on the first one is what you call your unconscious copy, where you are good at it and now it comes to you naturally. The only difference between you and I is that I've done it for so, many, for so long that it came to me naturally. So full time since 2002, so I've been doing it for 17, 15 years full time, 20 years, five years part time, in total 20 years experience. Now, if you're new to the game, you could be probably on these two portions. When you change it from your less dominant, I mean, your dominant to your less dominant hand, you are actually over here, right? Conscious competence. You develop a skill in that area, but you have to think about it. You were thinking how to write your signature. Now, how does it work with raising and trading? Very simple. Unconscious and confident is simply you don't know that you don't know something. So when somebody know, doesn't know about anything about trading, they get interested, they talk really, someone introduces it to them, and then all of a sudden they come into a workshop, a webinar, or start reading, and automatically become on the second level right here, the conscious and confidence stage, where you're now aware that you're incompetent at something, and hence you need to do something about it. So either you read via book, go to a seminar, or you go through an academy or a, an education program. Once you start trading, you will have a lot of inconsistencies. You make money, you lose money. You make money, you lose money. You make money, you lose money. And this is what I was uh, explaining to the beginners, uh, to the intermediate earlier, to the members, is that this is a mountain. When the person is new, they're nice and fresh. They're basically on the ground, and their goal is to get up there. You ask them what their goal is, oh, I want to be there. So they will train, they will do anything, they get excited. And then they start climbing that mountain. By the time they got midway, almost up there, challenges will happen it will test the threshold. Physically and mentally. In trading, it's more mental. So when a trader keeps losing, they make money, they lose money, they make money, they lose money, they make money, they lose money, they lose money and then all of a sudden they plateau. Either they will do something about it in order to keep going, or they will quit. That's why the blue belt level, the intermediate level, is a level of threshold. Some of the members will quit. They will quit when things become hard. They will quit. And guess what the excuses are going to be? Either family, time, or oh, These are the major excuses for why they're going to quit. And they forgot what their goal was. Their goal is to gain freedom. To get to the top, once you get to the top, is freedom. But I told them, trading is not that easy. You need to put time and money and effort into it. It's not a, it's a, it's a game where there's no easy way out. 
it doesn't matter if you're trading or any type of business. There's going to be some challenges that you have to face. The question is, how are you going to face those challenges? And that's where we added, I call it the awakening moment. You address that there is something wrong. Top four is being created by Abraham Maslow, what the pioneers of psychology. The awakening moment, uh, a good example that I can give you before I create the program to uh, expand it in 2014, 2008 to 2014, all I had was private clients. And these private clients are either they've traded on the average three to five years part time. They made money, lost money, made money, lost money. The question is why? And then all of a sudden they start to realize when we start doing training psychology that their problem is actually not the system. The problem is them. The six inches between their ears in terms of their living rooms. And hence, their belief system is not in synchronicity with the vices that they do have, and it's not in sync with the system that they're even using. Why? Because you just don't know what they don't know. So, once that happens, when a person quits, it goes back down, and they already accept, accept the defeat. But if someone continues, a couple of the students actually, they're already here, almost to the top, and then they quit. And I ask them, why? Why did you quit? Why are you quitting? Oh, because of this, 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 this. You know, you're almost there. Well, I'll get back into it later. I know for a fact they won't get back because a new habit will start to form into place. And then when you, once they have established that and they know that the mindset is a part of the game and they come become not unconscious competence, they develop a skill and error, but they have to think about it. They're being aware. And then from there is now the unconscious competence. Very important to know the stages of learning. There's a certain process. This is a process of what I use and what I teach basically students and it's also part of my own philosophy. And I actually took this uh, from Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll is the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. He used to be the coach of U U USC. Uh, and the majority of coaches actually you know, follow him. And funny enough, he's also part of philosophy from what I basically learned as being an athlete. The bottom in terms of the foundation, in terms of when it comes to trading is very important. That's why I never teach a person a trading system without them knowing the psychology of it. Trading psychology is so important. That's why in terms of the beginner program, trading psychology and technical analysis, the foundation analysis are in sync. And then once that has been established, the next level is to teach them a methodology with in conjunction with what they knew in terms of trade psychology 101 class with meditation and visualization. And then the last level is going through the art and science of technical analysis in conjunction with psychology of it. So, in other words, the rules of a belief, your belief system should be this, you need to be meticulous, you need to always put a stop loss. Be responsible with your own trade, your own actions, and you need to follow your own set of rules. When you love something, then you'll be enthusiastic. Always trade with enthusiasm. You trade smart, you trade objectively. And the belief system as well is that it is imperative to respect the market. If you do not respect the market, guess what? The market will kick your butt. Because at the end of the day, the market doesn't care about us, doesn't care about you, doesn't care whether you're trading in Europe, trading in Asia, you're trading in North America. It doesn't care. It is important to know that trading is easy as a belief system. It is easy. Unfortunately, a lot of traders think that trading is hard, but it's just a limiting belief system. Also to believe that there's more trade to come. In other words, the abundance mentality, and you need to accept that if once you are wrong, accept that you are wrong and you go to the next trade. Part of your philosophy is that you need to do things better than they have ever done before. So in other words, if you lost, it is imperative for you to go back, go back to your whiteboard, to the drawing board, why did I lose? Go in terms of your trading journal, why did you lose? 
Central theme is about competition, always compete. You're either competing or you're not in your last pursuit of competitive edge. You need to see yourself that you have the trading edge. Because at the end of the day, you're competing not just against yourself, but you're competing against others out there. I call them having the warrior mentality. My job as a trader is that I will annihilate every single trader out there as much as I can. Very similar in the way how they think in terms of institutions do. You go to the trading floor, it's actually overwhelming. Why just imagine a hundred alpha males and females in one setting? Imagine the amount of energy there is. If you're not an alpha male, alpha female, they will eat you alive. That's why it's fast when you're looking at trade, the volatility becomes so fast, especially when there's a report. People are quick. Um, and then if they didn't get the price that they want, sometimes they fight. They sometimes there's fist fights. So why'd you get my, that's my price. Well, uh, no, F you, man, that was my price. So in trading, same thing. I will, my goal is to milk every person basically out there as much as you can. So if we're trading together, you go, if you basically I'm going long, going short, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to take your money and I'll take your money. That's just the game. Part of your environment is that practice is basically everything. You need to keep trading, live trades, demo trades, don't even bother demo trading because then the brain is so smart, it knows that it's not real. Hence is why with my members, they open a $500 account as part of their curriculum. If they lost, who cares? What is the learning curve from there? Then it's better for you to lose 10 cents here, a dollar there, 10 dollars here, rather than you losing 100, 200, 500, and 1,000 bucks in one set. It's like trading is a very expensive learning tool. Especially traders who trade stocks, some of them lost 25K, 50K, 100K, and then they come to me and say, you know what? Look into the bright side. It was just a very expensive tuition fee for the mistake or mistakes that we did, basically. When you practice, this is how you gain your confidence and self trust within your own self. Our methodology, I know the, I know the success rate of the methodologies, method two and three, 81%. Method one is a 90%. Why? Because the uh, students have to back this every single time frame and they need to know whether if it works. It's their job, it's part of their curriculum. And once you create the confidence and trust within oneself, then you will have the focus and you will know ways that you're going to it. So that is the pyramid of success when it comes to trade. Hence, trading is 100% mindset. There's three simple ways on how to make money trade the markets um, profitably, consistently. Number one, step one is plan setting. We'll do this as an exercise, we have some time. I want you to answer these four questions. Why do you want to trade? Well, why do you want to trade? <coughs> Hopefully, this was financial freedom. Financial freedom? Awesome. What about you did? That's my answer. Awesome. Financial independence. Then what is your purpose in trading? Then? This looks better and consistent. Consistency is good. Making consistently profitable trades and the learn how to make consistently profitable trades. How about you then? Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, mental thoughts, mental challenges. Okay. The reason why we want to trade is we want to make money. That is the number one answer. Each and every time you're trading is because you want to make money. And this is exactly where the results will vary. And I always tell my members anyway, that once they start making money, and I'm not going to ask them, what are you going to do? And they're going to say, nothing. I said, what do you mean nothing? In the first place, why do you trade to make money? There's already money in your bank account. Are you going to take it or you're not going to take it? And they start to think. I said, I'm going to take it. What are you doing? I'm going to close. Excellent. 
So once you have money, make sure to take it. But of course, there are also some certain strategies that we implement by one of them is closing, say, majority of the positions, and you leave some, and then you trade or stop to break even. That's zero risk, infinite reward strategy right there. So when you have that money, the purpose and then the question is, what are you going to do now with that money? Yes, the purpose is to attain financial freedom. Freedom as well of time. And then there's some of the members I asked and they said, okay, you've made a certain amount of money, then why are you still looking for other jobs? Well, you have an option. You already made your goal basis for the week. You already made your goal for the basis for the day. You're gonna keep trading or you're gonna enjoy the day. Boom, enjoy the day. Why? Because they said it to themselves that I want to be financially free or free with time. So that is the purpose. Your purpose is what you're going to do with the money. Some will say, well, once I have the money, I'm going to create a philanthropy, a fund, a foundation, and so forth to give back to the community. Some will say my purpose is to spend more time with my kids, spend more time with my wife, spend more time with my partner, some spend more time with blah, 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 spend more time to travel. And unfortunately, sometimes we tend to forget our major purpose and why we're trading. Okay, three, what is your vision in trading? What is your ultimate destination? Where do you see yourself 12 months from now? Where do you see yourself three years from now, five years from now, about three months from now, about six months from now. So your vision also needs to be clear. What do you think is your only destination? No. <clears throat> I suppose being able to trade part-time and making it out enough to survive. Okay, great. How about you then? Financial independence. Excellent. Freedom. The freedom. And then you need to find your mission. What is your mission? Any idea? It's just that to get there, isn't it? So sort of learning how, how to make those trades and okay. learning how to get the mindset and like, you know, consistent profitable trades. Perfect. How about you, David? Machine trading, maximize profits. Maximize profits, okay, cool. Um, and what I want you to do over the weekend is that I want you to write down five goals that you want to achieve for your trade for the next 30 days, six months, and 12 weeks. Okay, cool. And uh, the same set of realistic goals as well, and what you really want. Okay. Two. Oh, I forgot to add in. I want you as well to write down your learning goal for the next 30 days, the next six months and 12 months. So the overall goal that you want to achieve in terms of what you want from trading and then your learning goal in order for you to achieve the major goal that you want.
Okay, when you've, when you've done that, step number two is you need to know your opponent, who you're dealing with. It's important for you to know what vehicle you're going to trade to master, whether you want to use forex future stocks or options. In my own personal opinion, stay away from options if you don't know the basic element of trading. Why? Because options are derivative of forex futures and stocks. Once you know the principle behind trading forex futures and stocks and you know the whole connectivity of those three, then you can work with options. Options should be the last vehicle for you to learn. Then you need to learn who you are competing against. Um, I would recommend, like I said, not to be in the game of trading where you are a retailer. I would recommend for you to be that little fish next to the whale. If that makes sense. Because if you're over here, the chances of you winning is very, very slim. You need to be an observer. Observing price, finding the data, the statistics in order to create that probability. And that's pure objectivity because you're looking at it. Actually, a good uh, a student gave a perfect analogy. You go to the beach, right, and you see waves. And you're just seeing waves the way they are. You don't add anything to it. You don't put your opinion, your perception into it. You're just seeing it. It's beautiful and you're hearing it. And if you're going to go for a swim, if you go against that wave, where you create your own opinion that you think, oh, okay, I can dip this one down. Either you get tumble over, or if you want to have a good wave with it and do bodyboarding, then you have to go with the wave. Same line with trading is you need to go with the wave. You need to go with what the institutions are actually doing. Because at the end of the day, of course, in between, there's a buy and sell between an institution and a retail, or a professional and a non-professional. So there's only the two players of the game anyway, a professional player and a professional player. One will buy, one will sell. One will be on the wrong side of the trade. It's a zero-sum game. To defeat your opponent, what process and strategies are you going to use to defeat them? So you need to have offensive strategy and defensive strategy. What is the process in order for you to get there? How are you going to win consistently against traders out there who don't have the trading edge compared to you? Then, do you want to be a club champion, a state champion, national champion, world champion, or Olympic champion trader? So you need to see yourself up to where you want to be. And hence, as well as a whole process, we use Forex because to be in a club champion, you're using a $500 account using a micro knowledge. You get to a state championship, national championship, you get the mini account. And then using a world a standard account is when you're in a world champion or Olympic champion. If that makes sense. Okay, the bigger the account, the easier also it gets. It's actually more challenging to trade on a smaller account. Okay, any questions based on this one? Because once you know who you're dealing with, it becomes easier once again. And step number three is also to get educated properly. There are three phases in our training program. There's a mental condition, there's a body condition, and technical condition. Mental conditioning for us is a training psychology 101, training psychology 202, uh, for mental visualization to uh, meditation. Uh, 101 is simply knowing who you are as an individual. It's an ongoing thing. Tenure conditioning is all the methodologies, including risk management, money management, tra uh, trading strategies, offense and defense, trading probability. Body conditioning is simply through meditation, um, visualization, um, having we have workshops for what type of food you should be eating, or water, exercising, and creating a daily routine. Because the mind-body continuum goes hand in hand, but in actual fact, all three of them goes hand in hand, and once you go meet all these, here's basically the trading zone. That's when you be in the trading zone. Um, if you're dehydrated, the mind cannot function, you won't be able to trade properly because you're going to make mistakes. If you're not well rested, the brain cannot function, you won't be able to trade properly. 
if you don't eat right, you feel lethargic, the brain can't function properly either, then you won't be able to trade properly. So guess what? Unfortunately, this is only where traders are always focus. I want a system one, a system one, a system. They tend to ignore these two. It doesn't work that way. Hence the inconsistencies in why 75 to 98% of people lose money in the markets. This is why our program is unique. You can never see this. In actual fact, um, I'm in the process of telling you whether if I could patent my work. I don't know if it's patentable, but uh, the whole process itself, it's pretty cool. So let's talk about mental conditioning. In mental conditioning is imperative to know who you are. When I say who you are, I'm not talking like who is David, who is Rob, who is the I. Check this out, and this is pretty cool. Over the weekend, I want you to answer this. Who are you? Who am I? Who is the I? The I is what we call either your subconscious. Subconscious, the infinite self, your soul, the light, your spirit. Who is that I? This is just a host. Because when we pass away, what happens to the host? It deteriorates. It goes back to mother nature. The question is where does the soul, the light, the infinite self, the spirit, your subconscious go? That is the question. Some culture says that it will transform and manifest itself and will find another host. It will keep on going until you will learn what you have learned in this lifetime. Once you reach Nirvana, what happens to the light? We don't know. Some certain cultures is why if you've done more negative things in this lifetime, you could either turn into different things, animals and so forth. But if you really think about it, you get rid of that and you're just focusing on the eye and it's a form of energy in the inside. You can manifest itself, you can manifest itself to whatever you want to manifest. Right? And we were talking here about the spirituality aspect now when it comes to trading. There's a different level incident. But once you have found that out of who you are as a trader, it becomes easier for you because you are now aware of who you have to be each and every time you trade. Hence what we call the be do have trading principle. You need to be a certain person. You need to be a certain individual in order for you to do the act, which is the doing in order to have the end result. What are your beliefs? What are your values? What are your emotional needs? What emotional needs do you need? Is your personal behavior and profile congruent to the system you are using? Are you competitive enough to have the trading edge? That's part of the mental conditioning aspect. Tenant conditioning is simply how can you increase your knowledge? How can you increase your trading skill? How can you control your emotions of fear, greed, regret, before, during, after trading? So the te technical conditioning when it comes to trading knowledge, your skill set, when to enter, when to exit, your profit maximizing strategies, creating your probabilities, your risk management, your money management, everything. Simply is 66%. Market funding level, but your trading system system itself, risk management, money management, you have to have your technical analysis of course. Knowing how to read price, supply and demand, energy flow of price, all the type of stuff. Okay, so those are the most important part. What are the advantages and disadvantages of books? What if you want to learn from a seminar about to get a mentor or a trader coach? What are the advantages and disadvantages? Ongoing education. Uh, lastly, when it comes to your tuition or your education, please don't be cheap. Don't learn via YouTube or via books. Stay away from these two, actually, even seminars. It's just a quick rah, 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 gives you the hype. 
guaranteed after about two days or a week. You totally forget it, and pretty much you're done. Okay? Find something that's sustainable to your education. When I mean sustainable, if that this is really something you really want to do, how is your education sustainable enough to keep going? Because in my opinion, learning is an ongoing thing. When you stop learning, that is it, you're done. Lastly, the body condition. How do you maintain balance mentally, physically, and spiritually? So what types of food are you eating? More processed food compared to plant-based? Are you meditating? Are you visualizing? Uh, what type of drinks do you drink? Are you more on the acidic side or more the alkaline side? So there's a course as part of the body, or the body conditioning is that I do teach the alkalinity uh, when it comes to trade. What type of foods, what type of drinks will give you more energy when it comes to trade so you can be more focused. Okay. Ellen Williams stated, is a really good book called The Intuitive Trader by Robert Capello. Oh, no, yeah, it's called The Intuitive Trader. Uh, and stated that the best traders condition themselves psychologically and physically for success. They have running programs, they go to the gym, they meditate, they're careful about what they eat, and sure they take excellent care of themselves. If you look at actually on the trading floor, the majority are athletes who trade on the trading floor. Also, it's funny, uh, they have to, they're, they're athletes or they love sports. Two, if you ask them, some will play golf, some will go to the gym early in the morning, some will go dancing at nighttime, just to release space of the stress. So when it comes to training, what do you do? For me, my sports is based for my training and teaching and my jujitsu and my taekwondo, and that gives me the, the stress release. Uh, at the same time, I don't think about training. I only think about trading either when I'm teaching or when I have a, a major trade. Yes, I do look at it and I always constantly keep on thinking, what is the next move? What is the next move? What are they trying to achieve? So if you're going to keep on going the same things today without personal change, where do you think you can see yourself 12 months from now? It's an important question. If you're going to keep doing the same thing over and over again and you have no change, where do you think you're going to see yourself 12 months from now? Marshall Silver, one of my good mentors, where I went to hypnosis from, stated that in order for your results to change, you must change. This morning, I was listening to another uh, mentor of mine called Jim Rohn, which is on YouTube, you can Google him, um, stated that, do not change from the outside. Focus, change from the inside, which is once again the I to change your results. The inconsistencies of why people basically lose money is just that the end is the end result based on who they are being, very simple. So that is basically the end. Um, we're currently accepting new enrollments where March 7 will be the start of the beginner program. It's a two month program for eight weeks. So either here in the morning, there's two classes in one day, one in the morning, one in the evening, Tuesday and Thursday is Monday to Friday, is basically all live trading. Group coaching is two times a week. Support classes uh, is actually two times a week. The tuition fee for the two-month program is fifteen hundred dollars. Um, if you pay basically up front, there's a payment plan of seven sixty per month. If you want to do it on a monthly basis, and we're so confident with the program that if you're not happy for the thirty days, then you, you can keep the thirty days. Uh, we keep basically the material. 
um, basically do whatever with it. Um, I haven't had anybody basically leave the program. They leave the program either one because they're too busy with their work and they're gonna come back some other time. I've never had any complaints in terms of the program itself. So yeah, March 7th. <coughs> so do you have any questions? That's basically the whole process. Uh, yeah, I had a question that somebody yes. said earlier about um, when you were talking about you were developed on Apple. Yes. Uh, you were talking about not following the advice of others. Yes. And um, do you subscribe to those sort of those websites like trading view and eToro and stuff where people share their ideas? Do you think that's dangerous as well? Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I never get into that. They're just for me, they're just noise, to be honest. Uh, we on the other hand, since Everybody in the trading community for us is basically different, right? Um, everything here based on the members is just maybe for updates. Intermediate, intermediate, beginners, or advanced is currently in session. So it's a form, just a reminder. It goes to your, um, to your phone. Now, if there's any potential trades, students basically have the opportunity while they're in the program. Is I have an alert system where let's say right here, trade alert, long SD. Uh, this one short Aussie USD, T1 reach, and 10 is trapped, is not the Aussie, is not out for the whole month. So giving them ideas, not just ideas, giving them, so here, trade is more than 100 pips and it's not a zero risk free trade. This trade is not considered closed. US dollar cap, time has been reached. This trade is not a zero risk free. So giving them the, uh, here, buying things, right? Giving them the ability that, hey, there's certain trades out there. Sometimes, uh, which I am telling students that there's no right or wrong answer. They can, based on potential trades, they can put in here or what they find, what they can find. So for example, here, Kate, Kate stated, hey, there's a new method number two with diversion that probably could close beneath the uptrend line for me, like uh, Japanese yen based on the dollar. So, um, which she, she shorted and then basically showed in terms of the way how she made money. For us, is an important because it's part of the learning aspect in terms of the, the stages of learning. is through practice and also demonstrating and helping. So they can put in over there and if they find something, they put in terms of the community. And then people can have look and someone say, well, saying, well, I don't see an M2, I don't see an M1, so where are you seeing it? And that's where it's the subjective, and then and I'll say, well, I don't think that's a method too because the candle is not within the criteria. Because what we do is so objective that everything is mathematically based. You can calculate the force, you can determine whether the candle has force and so forth. Now, from what you have stated, yes, I've seen those forms. In most cases, all BS because everybody now is putting their own opinion, which is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. You're putting your own opinion about one trade. They will put his own opinion. I will put my own different, my own opinion. And all of a sudden, we have three different opinions. So there's no one set. And the only reason why people go there and is because of the lack of confidence because they just don't know. When you don't know this information of what you normally tend to do, you, you search for an answer that will give you the confidence of why you have to answer. That's basically it. For us, our probabilities in terms of when we create a hundred percent is based on leading indicators like that in conjunction with up and coming news and plus in addition to the technical analysis in terms of what they know. The markets will always give clues. If you know how to read price and you will know exactly how to read what the market's telling you, then it's pure objectivity. Because if you're selling, I'm buying, David is hold, there's a big problem. There's three different opinions right there. 
you're saying that you're you're buying, I'm saying, I'm selling. David says he's holding. But if all three of us say it's got it's a good buy, then that's awesome. There's pure objectivity there. And then to create the probability, to create a probability is very subjective. It only becomes objective if all three of us will create that probability. So for example, I'm gonna ask you, so based on what we found, this on this, 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 what do you think is the probability is gonna to go to the upside? If you're gonna say 90%, I'm gonna say 95%, and then you're gonna say 70%, then at least we can calculate that, add it all together, and we create an average probability. And based on that probability is your position size. How much are you willing to risk based on that probability? If I have 100% probability, then I will maximize basically my risk because I have a 100% probability despite no guarantees, if that makes sense. If I have an 80% probability, then I'm not gonna put, go full out, and maybe I'm gonna put 8% out of 10% or 5% out of 10%, if that makes sense. Yes. <clears throat> um, so that's the difference, because everybody knows the process. Once everybody knows the process, then everybody will be on the same page. Forums are only good if you are on the same page. You say, for example, you bought a system from somebody else and you're within that forum, then awesome. But if you're just going through different things and people are giving you different opinions, no good. Yeah, I think that was one of my first mistakes really. I signed up, I sort of drawn the eToro. Oh, okay. Those sort of sites where you can sort of see what other people are doing. And I thought I could just watch what other people were doing. And then sort of learn that way, but you know, I think that was a mistake because they're all doing a difference. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody's different, unless once again everybody has the same methodology or every everybody has the same system with the way how they see things, then it's good. Other than that, you know, everybody has their own opinion, right? Like at the moment, like you know, President Trump is. I think there's a big thing out there, and some will say he's a dickhead, some will say he's good, and there's no common ground. You need to find a common ground if you're getting too far. Cool. So we are on the right track. It's 5.11. Any other questions, queries, was, challenges? Uh, the two months. Yes. It sounds like there's a standardized process or methodology there. Yes. Everyone's using the same. Correct. Uh, so the trading method then is not individualized at all. Right? It's, the it's the time frame where everybody's now different. Because the principle is the same. A good example is this. I can show you how to box, how to punch, how to kick. The question is, how, when are you going to use that? So same thing in terms of the knowledge, the principle is the same. It's just a matter of you when to use it. Some will use a daily time frame. Some will use a four hourly time frame. Some will use a one hourly time frame. Some will use a five minute time frame. The methodologies will you uh, will work in any time frame based on your behavior and your profile. So what I can do, David, is uh, I know I, I sent you the email. Did you get it? Um, yes. Sir. Yes. I can email you the syllabus on what's included for the whole uh, 12 weeks, likewise for the psychology, uh, for both. And there, there's 12 different sessions, 12 different modules. Is it 12 weeks or 8 weeks? I'm sorry, it's uh, 8 weeks, but it has 12 modules. Oh. Yes. Uh, likewise for the beginners. Um, so I guess another question was in terms of how probabilities is calculated. Is that more like an estimate? Uh, Based on opinion, then, in terms of exactly. That's where now the subjectivity come, comes into play. It becomes the only objective if we all as a group create the probability. You give me what you think, you give me what you think. Sometimes in class, when you create the probability, someone will say 50%. And I was like, hmm, okay, despite with all we've got, a piece of information, okay, no problem. I'll take that on board. And now there's a scale between if you, one will say 50%, on one side, one will say 100%. And then you'll end up on average, say, 80%. So it's not actually, like you said, uh, making use of the indicators based on tasks of price performance. Like, usually you can get probability based on indicators based on 
past price performance. This is sounds like uh, probability based on what we think. Okay, so there's actually three components, right? Like the 33% is from the starting point, actually. Before you even trade, you only have 30% success rate. Yeah. The other 33% is based on the macro fundamentals, everything that you see for you. They need to be in synchronicity. In a full perfect world, one has to be in synchronized with the another. So for example, the dollar index, if the dollar index is bullish, then overall the S&P should be bearish like this for the Dow, the VIX will be, will be bullish. Because the, the, the VIX is the volatile index, it's an inverse relationship with the S&P, inverse relationship with the dollar index, inverse relationship with oil, gold, copper, and same with 30 year. If this is bullish, then the yield should be also be bullish. So they all need to be in synchronicity. That's why the macro fundamentals is an important element because it gives you the other one third. And then the 33% is now based on technical analysis. Where is the price? Is the price at demand? And if price at demand, is it an uptrend? And if we're using an indicator, for example, like moving averages, is it above? And then if we have all these three, all this piece of information, out of that, then out of 33%, then we can say, well, all three are in there, it becomes 33%, then I have 100% probability of the overall analysis. Now, if one of them is not, say, for example, prices of demand, I'm going to go along, but it's a downtrend, then despite the price above the moving average, and the other one that we're looking for is what I call it. The ESD the sequential transition system. This is very, very important. So, if all of them are in there, and then we can create, I call it a royal flush. When it's a royal flush, it's 100% probable. You're pretty much almost guaranteed that you definitely make money. So, once we create that probability, Say you're going to buy where the probability of winning is 100%. When you're buying, you only have two areas targets, stops. Targets and stops are all based on price, time, and distance. Okay, so if it's going up over here, and if it chooses to go up, then the distance is a very important element. So if your target point is above certain distance, what is the probability of the price you get there? What if it doesn't want to go there? But if the distance is within the range, and you have 100% probability, plus the 100% probability of what you're already included over there. Then it will get to your target point first before your stop loss. Does that make sense? You need to know the direction. Where is the energy flow of price? Where is the energy of that price going to go first? To the flow, the direction to the upside if you're going long? or to the downside. If the momentum is pointing out, is going to the upside, you will make money almost guaranteed because that's where the direction you need. So if you put your stop lower to where the last low is, it's very unlikely that you're going to get stuck down. Is there a formula that you're calculating for your company stops? Or uh, yes. So that's also included basically because you're going to because there's three components in technical rounds like I said you have price time and distance and then we get to the advance you know we we look at you know, the science behind it or the force itself we look at Newton's laws law of angles law of harmonic vibration and so forth
Forex? No, the only reason we use Forex is because of the accessibility and the, the benefits, what it can do compared to learning how, you know, using stocks or but features. Like In my opinion, yes. It is actually easier to trade Forex than trading stocks. The easiest of them all is futures because the S&P is the cream of the crop. That's the top. Now, the reason why I like trading Forex is because, say for example, we're gonna trade the euro against the US dollar. If I'm gonna compare it like to sport, who are you gonna choose? You're gonna choose Germany versus the USC World Cup, for example. Then the majority will choose Germany because of statistics, the amount of players. Now, if you're going to do your games basketball, for example, Golden State Warriors versus Dallas, who are you going to choose? I'll choose Golden State Warriors because of statistics. Likewise, for currencies, the euro or the US dollar. Then I'm going to choose the euro because of statistics, for example. Now, longer term, though, I'm going to choose the US dollar because of the fundamentals of what it dictates. Because if Yellen stated that, hey, we're going to increase interest rates two more times, guess what happens to the dollar? It's going to be jacked up. What happens to the euro? It's going to drop. Therefore, if you're going short, the euro it doesn't matter where you buy it or you sell it at this point in time, and you put your stop at the highest level, you will make money overall. If that makes sense. Because statistically, the dollar is going to go up based on fundamentals, based on the trend, based on price. All right. Awesome. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me. You guys got my email address. Uh, David, if you can please give me your email address so I can email you the curriculum. That would be awesome. Please, that would be way better, please. That would be good because I forgot my, uh, my notebook. That would be great. And I'll email you the timetable as well. Yes. Are most of the people using the same uh, brokerage or I, Yeah, I use FXCM. Um, you're f feel free to use any uh, broker you wish to. Uh, but at FXCM, I've been using since 2007, 2008. Never really have any issues. Even when the market basically tanked, even with the dollar Swiss happened, no problem. Is there any advantage of it to other platforms or other brokerages? Uh, like, you know, you have eToro, you have Awanda, of course. Awanda is based in Canada. Uh, FXM, despite being based in London, they, are, they have also a branch here, and they are, um, they were an IPO. Well, actually, they're publicly traded. SEC always keeps an eye on them. That's why they always have to follow the rules. That's one thing I like about them. Uh, and they're... Charting software is very simple. It is powerful. It's not like I don't like MT4 to be honest. MetaTrader 4, um, Meta MT4 is they are simply generic. If any type of forex provider that you use, it's a gen generic software. It looks pretty cool, but you know it doesn't do the job. And what we as much as we can is to be simple. In my opinion, simplistic or having simple stuff is way better than being complicated, to be honest. So FXM has their own charting software? Yes, it? they do. And that's all you use? Yes. Because you can choose, because they have their own charting software, or you can use MT4 when you're downloading it. Uh, on the other hand, with FXCM, they have their own charting software. It's very, you know, it's simple, and it's, you know, that's all you need. Um, anything else? That's basically it. Are uh, live clients students or do they do demo? The demo only happens at the very beginning, like on the beginner program for two months, because they're, you know they're learning the principle, they're practicing, they're not really putting any trades. Now, despite they have the ability to be part of the trade alerts, um, it is now within their own accord. 
I will give them the entries, the target points, but I'm not telling them their position size because I, you know, I'm telling them that hey, you know you're in a beginner, but if you want to make money on the side, then yes, no problem. Uh, but by the time you get to the intermediate, then they start trading live. Yes. Uh, and then for others, uh, because if we're part of the group, uh, there's also, you also have the ability to, uh, I, call, I call it the money club. So you open up an account, you give me access to it, and then I basically trade the account while you're learning. And then we basically split, there's a, a profit share. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're potentially going to back some of the base and index. Exactly. Cool. Because you know, you know the methodology, you know the process, and it's very easy, and, and it's sometimes good for you know students that who are in the money club because they see exactly what I do, and then uh, and then they ask questions: Why did you enter on that? Why do you do this? Yeah, and it's performance based. If you know we made money in the month, then we both get paid. You know, if I don't make money in the month, then nobody gets paid. Yes. Is it generally successful in the club, isn't it? I'm sorry? Is it generally successful? Yeah, so based for the past three months, uh, first month we made like 5%, second month, you know, depending on the count, it varies between 10 to 20%. And then the third month for January is breaking even. Um, then we're in upcoming, so it's pretty good. Yes. So the goal is to make money. <laughs> Uh, but for those who started in Mar March or April, so uh, I doubled the account actually. Wow. Yes. So it's uh, pretty neat. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks guys for coming. Um, you're welcome. Yeah. And that's where it's made. And hope to one day that you guys will be, will be working together. It'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the next program starts in March. March, yes. Oh. March 7th is uh, the next one. Um, in advance, it's a performance base. There's no really, like, you get tested though, but uh, you test you. And it's democracy. <laughs> Based on students. So if, are, so if are, you guys are ready, then we will pass it. But if not, then we will give you more feedback. I said you're almost there. I need to do this, 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 this. Yeah. <laughs> the goal is actually consistency. Yes. Consistency in your work. Because if you're consistent in your work, then money will come out of it. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate okay. it. Yes. I you my email. Okay, great. Thanks, David. Yeah, great to see you. I'll see you next week if you'll be here. Thanks. Bye. Cheers, buddy.